Open your eyes. Open your eyes. This light to see through the darkness. First hurts the eyes. But you gotta keep looking. Search through the lights. Your vision is blurred from these pictures and planning inside your mind. Wake up from your slumber, put your eyes on true. The poison that you're under bro's killing you. Breathing in the fumes, you don't have a clue. But you're breathing in that yellow, that poison. It's got y'all wasted from the host cup. Got your mind in the day, you. Turn up, turn up. Your heart stays fake, it kills you all off while she laughs in your face. And you die young and you read your thoughts. You may have lived once, like you go to die twice. Not too late, late to open your eyes. So follow, 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 follow. Teachers, Beautiful dreamers, beautiful dreamers. Wake up and see. You're a slave. Oh, you're a slave in this dream world. Thinking, thinking you're free. Oh, how long will you slumber? How long will you slumber? Why niggas die in these? Why niggas die in these streets? Welcome back to the show. Uh, the number is 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. The Milwaukee, uh, the Milwaukee Brewers uh, beat the Atlanta Braves 7 to nothing on Sunday, uh, beating uh, Julio Tehran. After managing just five runs while dropping the first two games of the series, the Brewers scored seven times in the first four innings. Um, the Braves had won four straight games uh, in the matchup. Tehran, who's 6-6 six and six right now, allowed seven runs and seven hits in three-plus innings. Uh, he's given up 19 homers this season, including 13 at home, where his record fell to 1-6. and six. Mm, Despite the loss, the Braves have won four straight series for their best stretch since winning five straight to close the 2016 season. Uh, season. Left fielder uh, Matt Kemp, was a late addition to the lineup after missing two games. He's got uh, he had some uh, issues with his hamstring. Uh, falling off a an off day, the Braves open a series at San Diego on Tuesday night with rookie left-handed pitcher Sean Newcomb, who's 0-2 but got a has a 1.96 ERA, making his fourth start. So if he can get some darn run support, man, this Newcomb kid has been pitching good. Um, 1.96 ERA in a couple of outings that he's had for the Braves. Braves in general have been doing good, man. Uh, they're number two in the National League East right now, nine games behind the Washington Nationals. But they've went uh, they went seven and three in their last ten games. They picked up a game actually in that ten game stretch on Nationals, who were six and four in that uh, in once again in that stretch. So nobody thought that the Braves would be doing this good this year. A uh, new manager, full-time manager, and Brian Snicker, a uh, bunch of young players. Freddie Freeman's been out for many, many games now, a couple of weeks now because of uh, injury as well. 
So this Adams guy has come in and done fantastic things for the Braves, man. Um, and uh, and Freddie Freeman's stead. And uh, everything's come together, man. They look pretty decent. Nobody expected them to be uh, playing this good of baseball uh, this late in the season. So shouts out to the Atlanta Braves, even though they lost their last game against the Milwaukee Brewers. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Show.com from Jake Clyde Censored. In the chat on Spreaker.com, he says, they sure as hell were fighting dogs when I grew up in Mississippi from Cool Cell. He says, why did Vic's cousin snitch on him? He never understood that. Take the charge. How much time was he facing? Yeah, at the end of the day, I guess they, I guess, yeah, I, I never understood that either. Remember, uh, they had this documentation and these letters or something, some types of correspondence that was sent to the house, wherever they was doing this dog fighting stuff at, and it had M. Vic on it. And everybody in the land was, man, that's Marcus. Marcus need to take this rap. <laughs> yeah, all his cousins and brothers and everybody just let that man do that time, man. Somebody could have took that damn charge. Marcus could have easily took that damn charge. I mean, hell, he wasn't doing nothing. Uh, You see right here, uh, Mr. Vic, it says M. Vic. No, no, that's not me. That's my brother Marcus. Yeah, yeah. Well, them cats didn't want to do that little two years. What was it, two years? I think it was right under two years that Vic did. Or it might have been right under three years. It was a lot of damn time. From Jam 2, this is his son. He can do whatever he needs to do about, and the press may be good for some other young men. From, um, oh, Jam 2 talking about Keyshawn Johnson and the stance that he took with his son and telling him he needs to get his shit together uh, before he goes back to school. From uh, LD, Free Nutsi. That's why Doug was up in the clinic 50, 11 times shaking my head. Right, right, right. Right, right. Nothing like Free Nutsi. You're right. I'm not denying it. You probably, you probably got some truth in that statement, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Rough buff. Class between 8 and 12. Chasing Nutsi, Tonk, Spades, all of that. Oh, I read that one a little bit earlier. From Al Thompson, if he really wanted to party, he should have signed on with Louisville. Ah, the Louisville Cardinals in some news. Uh, uh, infractions, NCAA infractions. Uh, maybe we got time to talk about that a little bit later in today's show. From, um, who do we have here? From, who? From Clay St. Patrick's Davis, I wish the damn Falcons had drafted Kaiser when they had the chance. Uh, why are they talking about Deshaun Kaiser from J.B. Jennings? Casey, you mean you love for Florida will increase now that your nephew is there. Okay, Casey got a nephew going to play for the University of Florida? Good stuff, good stuff. Congratulations, sir. From J.B. Jennings, Casey, doesn't your daughter go to Michigan State? You should always root for the Florida team to break that tiebreaker. From Leonard's son, I third title. We have exceeded our rock music quota for the week. <laughs> yeah, so we randomly pick songs to play from our database uh, during the breaks. And, yeah, interesting enough, we've had an overabundance of rock music that we played during the breaks today. I mean, it is what it is. no big deal. From Cool Cell, Golden State GM and talks with Vince Carter and Zach Randolph. Yeah, I read a story um, talking about uh, the presumed, you know, guys that are odds on favorites to chase the ring this summer. Uh, this is actually a story by uh, Fox Sports um, by Andre Vergara. And he gave his top five ring chasers, as he put it. Uh, at number five, he's got Paul Millsap, power forward for the Atlanta Hawks. Um, Hawks have shown some interest in trying to keep them, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Seems like uh, their organization is in rebuilding mode right now. The thing about Paul Millsap and him chasing a ring, I think he's probably still age-wise. Let me see if it lists how old he is. Age-wise, I would think he's kind of like under that line where you would say that he's he's a has-been or he's a veteran so, like I said earlier, it's cool for him to go chase a ring. He's probably young enough to be included in that 
you know, that that negative conversation that I have about these young guys going to play for, you know, a, a contender already or a team that's already stacked with players. But the thing about Paul Millsap is he's not that big of a name. We don't regard him as one of the greatest basketball players of all time, of all time, like we generally do for Kevin Durant and LeBron James. So him going to chase a ring is kind of lame, but it's no big deal because we don't give a shit about Paul Millsap. Sorry, just being honest. At number four, the writer has Rudy Gay, small forward from the Sacramento Kings, kind of in the same category. Rudy Gay's had a solid career, but we don't put him in the in the same conversation once again as some of the greatest players of all time. Vince Carter, he has a number three, uh, going to chase a ring. And he's forty years old. He's clearly in that category of a guy that's old, decrepit, lost many many steps. He's still playing good for his age, but Vince Carter going to uh, play for a contender and get him a ring after the long, great career that he's had, I don't have a problem with that at all. Same conversation you had with Charles Barkley when he went and played for the uh, uh, Houston Rockets, you know. I mean, I I think that's looked upon uh, as okay. And so Vince Carter is his third guy. Second guy, Carmelo Anthony. Carmelo's pretty much in that realm right now where you know his career is coming to an end. I would have no problem, like I said earlier, him going to play for Cleveland. And Paul George. Paul George, um, same thing. He's not quite on that level as Durant. He's a star, but he's not a superstar, a transcendent star like Durant and LeBron. So it has a little bit less, less a little bit less luster as well in him going to play for uh Another team. Now, if he were to go play for the Lakers, I mean, that wouldn't be a big thing at all because he'd be the main guy. Kind of like when Shaq went and played for the Lakers before they had drafted Kobe. No big deal. No qualms with Shaq because he was still, quote, unquote, the guy. They were building around Shaq. If Paul George at this age goes and plays for the Lakers, I don't have a problem with it at all because he would be the guy as of right now until LeVar Ball, Alonzo Ball plays a couple of years and maybe separates himself. But Paul George going to play for the Lakers, I don't have a problem with that at all. He would be the guy. He wouldn't be going to team up, you know, with Brandon Ingram or uh, Julius Randle or anybody like that. He would be the guy. They would build around him. So I wouldn't have a problem with that at all. Um, Interesting little story, though, about ring chases in the NBA. From uh, Miss Mocha Bella, morning, Mocha. She says, microwave is better to have a garden of Whedon than it is not to smoke the garden of Whedon. Laugh out loud. I didn't know Mocha was a uh, was a smoker. Uh, go ahead, Mocha. I didn't know you were a smoker. Mocha's a grandmama too. Uh, grandma smoking uh, uh, lady. Smoking weed lady. I like that. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> yeah. All right, when we get back from the break, man. We'll wrap up today's show. I'll read more of your, your posts in the chat room. Take any phone calls if we have them. And get on out of here, all right? 15 more minutes of the Doug Stewart Show. Don't go away. Heartless 